I'm a soldier in the United States Army, and I'm currently a little over halfway through a deployment in Iraq. About a month ago, they sent a couple of guys from my platoon home for various reasons. Gym-related injuries, family tragedies, children being born, things like that. So this left us a bit short-handed. I ended up with an extra guard shift at the motor pool, essentially a big parking lot for military vehicles. This shift lasted from 2am to 4am. Anyway, 4 rolls around, our replacements show up, and we're relieved right on time. I grab my weapon and head back to my room. Just as I pass through the small opening in the T-wall barrier, about 50 feet from the shack where I was staying, Something caught my eye on the cement sidewalk in front of me. I stopped dead in my tracks. In front of me, about 30 feet or so, was a black and white cat. I don't know why, but just the sight of it caused me to jump, and for some reason, I was afraid. Not typical, like, oh shit type of fear, but more like an overwhelming anxiety and paranoia. The cat just sat there and didn't move, but looked directly at me. I noticed something a little odd about it. I have a cat back in the States who's the absolute light of my life. A black cat with white paws, a white chest, and a little slither of white running down the length of its face. This cat looked exactly like mine. Now, obviously, I knew it wasn't. But the sight of a familiar-looking feline friend was enough for me to somewhat relax the jumpy feeling I had previously felt. I took about three steps forward, slung my rifle to my side, and crouched down with one arm outstretched in an attempt to coax the cat to come over. My lips pursed to make that little come here sound when I became completely paralyzed with fear. From my standing eye level of about six foot, to my eye level crouching at around three foot, the animal I was seeing looked completely different, as if my visual perspective completely changed the appearance of the animal, like one of those optical illusion perspective-based art sculptures. What I was looking at no longer looked like a cat, but a large, broad dog-like animal, crouched with its head lowered just inches off the ground. All rationality abandoned me at this point, and all I could do was stare back at whatever it was. I couldn't make out much of a face. The only light source around was from a street lamp about 50 meters behind me. What I was able to make out were its eyes, which I could see clearer than daylight, and they were human. Go and look into a mirror, and open your eyes as wide as you possibly can. That's pretty much what I was looking at. It just stared at me, and I stared back. I'll tell you now that I've never been more terrified in my entire life. I slowly stood back up, half expecting whatever I was looking at to take on the appearance of a cat once again. But it didn't. The thing didn't move a fucking inch during this entire encounter. At this point, my weapon wasn't even enough to make me feel safe. I backed away slowly, all the while keeping my eyes on what was in front of me. I had just about reached the gap in the T-wall once again, when the thing just disappeared. It didn't back away and vanish into the shadows. It just kind of steadily wasn't there anymore. But right before it vanished entirely... I heard what sounded like a low, but somehow loud, guttural growling noise that resonated off of the T-wall surrounding the area. Needless to say, as soon as I passed back through the T-wall, I fucking bolted. I ran as fast as my legs could carry me, back to my team leaders across the gravel road. I slept on his floor that night, blaming it on the fact that we had to get up early the next morning, and the alarm on my phone hasn't been working lately. I haven't seen anything since, but every other night or so, when I'm by myself, I'll get that same horribly overwhelming sense of paranoia and anxiety.
If anyone has any information on what this might have been, I would greatly appreciate it. I was out driving alone in a national park. There was a huge clear moon, the kind of moonlight you can read by. The road went straight along the bottom of a wide, flat, mostly barren valley, then banked up sharply to the left onto the ridge. It was about 10pm, and I drove through the valley on full alert, watching for animals and loving the scenery in this crazy bright moonlight. When I hit the curve and went into the sharp uphill left, I saw something through my side window. A white thing. It was rapidly getting larger in my peripheral, as though it had been moving parallel to me, but the turn in the road meant I was now in its path. So I turned my head and looked directly at it. It was white, man-shaped but without genitals, and completely naked. A deathly, nauseating white and greasy shine, completely hairless. It was crawling on its hands and knees, but it was half the size of the car and moving unnaturally fast. It had a rubbery face, distorted by what looked like a scream, but it wasn't making any noise. The look on its face, I can't even tell you. I can still make myself feel sick from the memory. I believe that it was intelligent, and that it wanted to tear me apart with its teeth. The speed was horrifying. It went from being a small white dot to spitting distance, all in the time it took to make that turn. When I unfroze myself and hit the gas, it was on the road, and I braced for it to run into my door. And then it was gone. The rearview mirror showed me nothing. I've never told anybody. I've seen a few glitchy, ghosty things over my many years, but nothing that has frightened me like that. I can't seem to find any reference to anything like it, and I'd like to know if this thing is known folklore. I looked into skinwalkers and wendigos, and it's a case of almost but not quite. Can skinwalkers ever appear without their skins? Then maybe. Can wendigos be stocky instead of skinny? Then again, maybe. This happened in Newfoundland. Newfoundlanders have no trouble telling ghost stories, and a lot of them believe in fairies. But I've not heard of a creature like this. As for it being a bear, Newfoundland only has black bears. Hell, I even tried to tell myself it was a badly lost wet polar bear. But when I say this thing was crawling, I mean I could see its legs below the knee. I was very close to it by the end, and it looked like a crawling man. I spent a lot of time in that area, and encouraged storytelling in the bar but nothing like this ever got mentioned. But, as I said, I never told this story either. The degree of fear involved somehow put it in its own category, as if it would be very, very bad luck to speak about it. I never thought I believed in them, but I think it was a demon. Some Backstory I'm Chinese, and my parents moved to the UK when they were younger. My uncle, who I rarely used to see because he still lived in Hong Kong, finally moved to England when I was eight. He worked as a policeman back in his hometown, and one day he told me this really creepy story. It was pretty much an average day for him and he got a call to make a pit stop at the local woods. Someone got a message that there were some kids messing around there. The usual, bonfires, drinking, etc. So my uncle gets in his police car and drives down to the woods. He reaches the area, and it's already very dark at this point. He drives to where the kids supposedly were, but they must have already left, leaving behind all their rubbish. My uncle, being the nice guy he is, gets out of his car to clear the place up a bit. 
And when he's finished, he gets back in his car. He does the usual, puts on his seatbelt, turns on the engine, checks his mirrors, and then turns the headlights on. As he does this, he begins to step on the accelerator pedal. However, the car doesn't move. The engine is clearly on, and he can hear the car revving, but still no movement. He begins to wonder if he's stuck on a rock, or if something's obstructing the car. He's about to get out and check, when he notices a strange outline in front of the vehicle. As his headlights are on, he can see everything pretty clearly. He explains to me that this outline he saw suddenly materialized. In front of his car stood the figure of a Chinese woman with long hair and her hands on the front of the car. He described her pale face, the dirty clothes she was wearing, and even noticed her sad expression, and her eyes, her red eyes, like she had been crying loads. When I asked my uncle about her, he explained that he knew she was a spirit straight away. Mainly because she had just suddenly appeared, but because also he tried to gradually accelerate his car, but it wouldn't budge an inch, even when his foot was to the ground. Once he registered this though, he started panicking and tried to put the car in reverse. As soon as he looked down to do this and then looked up again, all within a split second, she was gone. He drove out of there like a madman, and didn't look back. He swears to this day that that experience was true, and he'll never be able to erase it from his memory. I've never been a believer in the paranormal, or anything that didn't have a rational explanation. That is, until I saw what I saw. I have a daughter named Ellie. Her mother and I split up when she was six years old, and because of some problems that her mother was having, we decided that it would be best if she lived with me. My grandpa left my dad his old house in his will, and my dad had it fixed up with the intent to sell it. But with the situation, we decided that I'd move in and rent the house from him. The house was perfect for myself and Ellie. It was a small two-bedroom house, and it was out of the way from everything. The only downside was that the bedrooms didn't have closets, but we didn't have a whole lot, so I knew we could make it work. After our very first night of staying in the house, Ellie came to me and said that someone was in her room. I can't remember the exact conversation, but I basically told her that she was just imagining things because it was a new, possibly scary environment. That night, I walked her around the house, showing her that everything was locked up. I took her into her bedroom and looked under her bed, checked her window and looked behind every nook and cranny basically. I managed to convince her that there was no way that anyone could get in to do her any harm. I told her that I wouldn't let anyone hurt her, and with the help of a nightlight, I was able to get her to go to bed. The next morning, Ellie again complained that there was someone in her room, and she didn't want to stay in the house anymore. She wanted to go live with my parents, her grandma and pa. I had honestly never seen her this upset. I told her that I would sleep in her room that night, to prove that there was nothing to be scared of. I brought my blankets and pillows into Ellie's room, and made myself a comfy spot beside her bed. We both said our good nights, and it didn't take me long to fall asleep. I'm not sure what time it was, but I woke up to the sound of metal softly clanging together. It took me a minute to focus my eyes, and the first thing I noticed was that Ellie had left her bed and snuggled up with me on the floor. At first, I thought I imagined the noise, but then I heard it again. Ellie's nightlight was on, so there was a soft orange glow illuminating the room, and even though I could make out things in the room pretty clearly, I saw nothing out of the ordinary. 
As I mentioned earlier, there were no closets in the room, so I had bought some racks to hang our clothes on. Her hanging clothes were the first thing I noticed moving. The clanging was the sound of hangers hitting each other and sliding on the rack. Then the clothes parted, almost as if you were going to open the curtains on a window to look outside, and the shadowy figure of someone or something's head appeared in the gap of the clothes. I was paralysed. I wanted to grab Ellie and run as fast as I could, but I couldn't do anything. My body wouldn't allow me to do so. The only thing I could do was keep my eyes fixated on whatever was staring at me and my daughter. What is that, Daddy? A tiny whisper came from behind me. Shh, was the only thing I managed to get out. I can't tell you how long I laid there staring at whatever it was, but it felt like an eternity. Eventually, this thing backed away, disappeared, whatever you want to say it did. It didn't matter to me. It was gone, and so were we. I took Ellie out of the room and put her in my bed, and I didn't sleep a wink the rest of the night. The next day, I gave her what she wanted. We moved in with her grandma and grandpa until I was able to get a place of our own. This was a little over four years ago, and I still get goosebumps if Ellie brings it up, or even just now while writing this. I've never been that scared in my life, and I doubt I ever will be again. Hi guys, Lazy here, and thank you very much for listening. It's been a while since I've done a paranormal based video, and so I thought, you know, let's go down that route again. So hopefully you enjoyed it, and if you did, make sure to let me know down below, and tell me what kind of videos you'd like to see for the next uh, upcoming uploads, because I've got a bit more spare time this week. So maybe I can bring another video out in the next couple of days, we'll see, we'll see. A big thank you to the wickedly talented Anthony Salinas for the thumbnail. <laughs> yes, that is my John Travolta impersonation. Make sure to check out uh, Anthony down in the description below for more awesome pieces, because he really is a talented guy and does some amazing work. So, um, yeah, big props to him. Check him out. And hey, while you're down there, be sure to do some naughty things with that like button. <laughs> Until the next video, Lazy Legion. You will stay spooky. And remember, the best things happen in the dark.